Woo! How's everybody doing today? Yeah. Man, do I have a prophetic word for you guys. We're starting um, a new series today. And I just want to let you know, man, we're going to be doing this series. Uh, and, and next week is Easter. Yeah. Everybody make some noise for Easter. Come on now. Easter. You know, Easter is like that holiday where people who even hate God will come to church. So can you guys take advantage of this time? Like people go to church on Easter because it's a cultural thing to do. All right. So think and pray for people that are so far from God. People that are so turned off from church, people that are turned off from the term Christian or anything about Jesus, invite them out on Easter because that is like the one day a year where we have that opening. And next week is going to be so powerful. It, we're going to meet people where they are. People are going to feel loved. People are going to feel accepted. People are going to be restored. Those people that have left God because they thought God was mad at them or they left God because they, they met someone in the image of God and then they, they got hurt by them. Like people are going to experience the love and the power of Jesus next week. So invite people. Can we do that? Yeah. We're going to get creative. We're going to have more seats. But invite people next week. Invite people. Pray. Just ask God, you know, to show you, like, who should I invite? And God is, is going to begin to put family members on your heart, people that you haven't seen in years. He's probably going to give you somebody random from high school. Like, God will do things because he knows what people are going through. Some of the people that you probably think will never, ever come to a church, those are the people that God is going to put on your heart. Trust me. Amen. All right, so we're going to go to Exodus. You can stand up in your seat. We're going to have it on the screen. Exodus 4.10. And this message today is really going to spark a fire. <laughs> so it says, Then Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech. I'm slow of tongue. Moses dealt with stuttering since he was a kid. He was slow of speech and he had a speech impediment. But that didn't stop God from asking him to do what he was calling him to do. And said, the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? And, and who, who makes the mute, the deaf, the sing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now, therefore, just go and I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with your mouth and I'm going to teach you what you shall say. But he said, oh, Lord, please send, my, please send by the hand of somebody else. <laughs> and so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, it's not Aaron, the Levite, your brother. I know that he can speak well. And look, he's coming out to meet you right now. When he sees you, he's going to be glad in his heart. In verse 16, it says, so he shall be your spokesman to the people. And he himself shall be as a mouth for you. And you shall be a, as a God to him. And you shall take his rod, take this rod in your hand with which you should do all these signs. The name of this message today, and we're starting a new series called Comfort Zone Addictions. Woo! -hoo -hoo! Oh my goodness. Oh, you talk about a series that's about to bring transformation to people. It is this series right here. Because God is saying it is time for you to break through the, the patterns of your life, through the negative mindsets in your life. Let me tell you this right now. You have so much power on the inside of you that you have not tapped into yet. You have so many gifts, so much anointing, so much potential on the inside of you that you have not experienced yet. And God is saying it is the season for you to fulfill everything that I've called you to do, to not, to not be bound by fear no longer to not be bound by your past any longer, but to rise up and do the thing that he's calling you to do. Because right now in this dark hour, in this world, our culture needs you. Our city needs you. Our neighborhoods need you. Our families need you. Our schools need you. Our city of Los Angeles needs you. The nation needs you. The world needs you. And I don't know a lot of us are looking at me, uh, looking at yourself and like, oh, me? Like, what do I have to offer? No, you have everything to offer and more. God wants to use you. You. He wants to use you. 
Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the message today in Jesus' name. I I thank you, Lord, for a a message from heaven that's going to bring transformation to people who are here today. Lord, even those who are watching on YouTube, I pray that you would speak to them where they are. I pray that they can't resist, but they have to watch the entire message. And Lord, I pray for the prophetic to be unleashed today. I come against the spirit of fear. I come against anxiety. I come against doubt. I come against unbelief. I come against just things that are minds that are bringing distractions from our week. Lord, let there be such an anointing of focus in this place today. Let there be such an anointing of people being in tune with your spirit. Even as I am speaking, Lord, I thank you for breaking the rules of church. I thank you for breaking the confines of of religion. Lord, I thank you for speaking to people's hearts because we don't want church. We want to encounter with the real God. We want to encounter with the presence of God. We don't have time to play church. People are dying. We don't have time to play church. People are confused. We don't have time to play games. We need the power of the living God. We need you, Jesus, to shake us and to transform us and show us what we have to do. If you're in agreement today, everybody say amen. I'm tired. I'm playing. All right, you guys may be seated. (laughs) I'm like, man, I preached my whole message, right? Right? (laughs) I haven't gotten started yet. That was, you know, that was, that was prayer. That was, just, that was just prayer. Lord have mercy. Man, God is so good. You know, I want to say this after I take a little sip. Thanks, Evan. Evan just got engaged, so he's, he's ready. He's ready. He is ready. I just want to say, it's so funny. I just want to say comfort zones are cool. Like, comfort zones are good, you know, because comfort zones were created to make us feel safe and secure. And many people have comfort zones, you know. Comfort zones are not necessarily all the time a negative thing. You know, where you live is your comfort zone. The house that you live in, the place that you stay at, that, that is a part of your comfort zone. The bed that you sleep in. I know we just got a new bed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was having such bad sleep, and now it's been amazing, life-changing. If you want to make any investment, make it in a bed. I'm telling you right now, okay? Please. But, but for us, our bed is our comfort zone, you know? The restaurants that you like to eat at. Come on, let's, let's make some noise for some of our restaurants that we love to grub at. The restaurants that you like to eat at, that's a part of your comfort zone, okay? You get the same meal. You get the same. You know what you're going to get. You, you know what to expect. You know, your friends, your inner circle, that's a part of your comfort zone. You know, the places where you go to have fun or or rest or chill out, that's a part of your comfort zone. Comfort zones are not necessarily a bad thing because you know what you're going to get. You know what to expect. Your comfort zones, like you are in full control. Comfort zones are not a bad thing until it gets in the way of what God is calling you to do. I said, comfort zones are not a bad thing until it gets in the way of what God is calling you to do. You see, comfort zones can be your best friend. But when God is trying to advance you in your purpose, when God is trying to release his power on your life, when God is trying to release the greatness that God has called you to be on your life, when God is trying to tell you to speak to somebody who has a bad attitude, when God is calling you to love somebody, and that, that's just full of pride. When God is telling you to go out of your way to make someone feel safe, to serve someone else, to speak to someone else, when God calls you to do things like that for his people, your comfort zone is no longer your best friend. It's your worst enemy. It's your worst enemy. Has anybody ever seen the cartoon? Uh, it's a classic cartoon. Charlie Brown. Oh, somebody's shaking their head. You're going to watch it today. You gotta watch it today, okay? Just download, just, just go on YouTube, watch Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown was a classic cartoon back in the day. It was actually one of my dad's um, you know, favorite cartoons. And this character on the cartoon, uh, on, this, on this show, his name was Linus. Do you guys remember Linus? Some of you guys. Linus was so cute because Linus was this little boy and he carried his blanket everywhere that he went. It was his blanket. Like, he carried it anywhere that he went. He would go to the store, he'd have his blanket. He'd go to the park, he'd have his blanket. He'd go to Disneyland, he had his blanket. He did not let that blanket go. That blanket made him feel safe, and it made him feel secure. And I thought about it watching the show. I'm like, man, he's so cute. It's just so cute watching. He's so adorable. He's so cute. But then I thought about it. I'm like, what if Linus was a grown man, though? Like, what if his character was an adult on the show? It would go from being cute and adorable to being disturbing. You would think Linus had issues. 
Like, why is this grown man carrying a blankie everywhere he go? And yes, I said blankie, because that's what it is. Why would he, like, he carries it everywhere that he went. You know, most of us are not carrying physical blankets, and I, and I get that. But a lot of us are carrying spiritual blankets wow. called comfort zones. And it goes with us wherever we go. And the reason why so many people are turned off from the name Jesus or, turn, or so turned off from the term Christianity or, or they despise church, oh my goodness, the reason why people have never encountered a message from God through a person, they've never been prayed for by someone else that, that's carrying the love of Jesus, they've never been connected to anybody who represents Jesus, people have not seen Jesus lived out. They've only heard it preached, but they've never actually had an encounter with someone who's living Jesus out. And the reason why is, is that the people that God is trying to raise up, the people that God is trying to put in position, you and I, we have been hiding because secretly we are comfort zone addicts. You know, we know about being addicted, you know, to drugs. We know a whole lot about being addicted to alcohol. But did you know that you could actually have a comfort zone addiction? And many of us are not able to fulfill the thing that God has in our life because secretly, we don't, we don't even know this, we're, we're comfort zone addicts. We don't leave anywhere without our blankie. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's stuck to us. And unfortunately, many of us have never experienced like the, the, the version of ourselves that God has called us to be. Like we don't even know. As long as you're in your comfort zones, you will never know how prophetic you are. You will never know how powerful you are. You will never know how compassionate you are. You will never know the anointing that is on your life because you never give God a chance to, to use you. We never know how powerful we are because all we see is our past experiences. All we see is that time that we failed. All we see is that time that we got embarrassed. All, all, all we see is that time that we got shame on us and people started making fun of us and, and it, it, it's crippled us inside. And so I'll never do that again. And I'll never put myself out there again because that relationship, I got hurt. That relationship, I got rejected. So it's easy for me to stand this distance away with my blankie in my comfort zone. And unfortunately, as we're walking around with our spiritual blankets, you know, we don't necessarily like to get too close to the edge. We never grow. We, we, there, there's, there's, a, there's a ceiling over our life. And the reason why many of us are still dealing, if I could say it right now, we're still dealing with a lot of issues, like such as there's certain addictions that we have that you know it's like time to break free of it. But the reason why we run back to it is because it's for our entertainment. Do you know, like, one of, the most, one of the top reasons for addictions is because people are bored. You know, boredom for the enemy, whoo, that is, that's, 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 you know, for, for him, like, he, he, he loves that. Like, that's, that's the bait that, that he needs for you is you to be bored. Because when we get bored with life, I mean, when people are in the quarantine, I mean, people was, well, that's all we did was drink. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm alone. I'm, we, we're, not, we're not being real. Oh, okay. No, no, one, no one was getting drunk every day during, when, when we were stuck at home? Okay. So you see how people be religious right now? Okay, okay. Right, 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 right. Because when you're bored, it gives the enemy access to bring things in your life for entertainment. And the reason why we're bored is because we don't live life on the edge with God. God wants you to get up off your feet. He wants you to stop being afraid. He wants you to stop being complacent. He wants you to stop doubting who you are. He wants you to stop beating yourself up. He wants you to stop saying, well, I'm ashamed, God, because of what I did yesterday. He wants you to get you, yourself out of yourself and get you into God. He wants to use you. And as you start walking in this journey with God, life begins to be so exciting. God will begin to tell you something, show you something, start something, do something, and you'll start seeing miracles after miracles, signs and wonders just, just flooding around you and flooding your life. Like there's a joy that you get in God. You, there's not a joy that you get because you got your paycheck or your stimulus check. Like there's a joy that you get because you are walking with God and God is doing miracle signs and wonders through you. Because every time you step out, God is there. Every time you step out, he shows you another level of who he is. Every time you step out, I'm just, I'm preaching ahead of myself right now. Let me, let me, let me hold back. <laughs> I'm preaching a message right now, man. Oh my God. I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God. Let me, can I pray for you real quick? 
Just lift your hands up like this. Father, what I'm feeling right now, I impart to everyone who is here today the sensitivity to your presence. Father, I pray that they feel your presence like I feel your presence right now. I pray, Lord God, that they feel your angels like I feel your angels right now. Those who are watching at home, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you feel the presence of God just like how I feel the presence of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're not on the outside of us. You're living on the inside of us. Break everything that is in the way now in the name of Jesus. I want you to say, God, I release what I've been holding on to. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. My prayer is that this church is full of the glory of God. I know people just chase numbers and chase people and, you know, we want a thousand people. I'm like, we're going to have a thousand people for no reason because, I, like, what's the point of just having a thousand people or having a lot of people at your church? You're just going to be an old, dusty, religious organization that's not doing any impact in the neighborhood, no impact in the city, and you're just taking up space. And I said, God, Purpose Place LA is not going to just be this religious organization. No, 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 no. Purpose Place LA is adopting Los Angeles. We are a church without walls. We are a church that is going out into the streets. We are a church that's adopting people, Father, for you in the name of Jesus. People that, that are on the streets, people that have run away from God, people that are addicted to all types of drugs, people that have uh, experienced abuse and, 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 and experienced molestation. God, these are the the people that you're calling us to, people that hate God, people who say that they're atheists because they, they are secretly just hurt and they secretly have been let down by, by, by somebody else. Father, I thank you that you are sending us to these people in Los Angeles in the name of Jesus. But in order for this to happen, we got to step outside of our comfort zones. Because if you do not step outside of your comfort zone, somebody's going to die. I'm going to say that again. You don't know this, but the reason, why there's, why, the reason why you're here today, you know, my father went home to be with the Lord a month ago, suddenly. But this man of God came up to me afterwards. He's, he's a prophet. I mean, this is a powerful man of God. He was at my dad's memorial. He came up to me and he said, you know, I've been to many memorials. I've been to many funerals. He said, but what I, as I was sitting in there, I knew that I knew that I knew that your dad's work had been completed. And why was his work completed? Because my dad would constantly step outside of his comfort zone. And he would always minister the love of Jesus to people. Wherever he went, doing Uber, he would minister to people as they were in his car. He, he, it, nothing stopped him. Fear, he was out of his head. He stepped out of his insecurities because he said, I'm here to do your will, God. And there's many people, you're, are, if you're still alive today, it's because your work has not been completed. There's somebody at your job. There's someone in your family. Now, I know, I know, I'm like, I'm just like, God, you're messing me up today. I'm like, <laughs> we're not even in the message anymore. Okay, it's, it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get back. But I got to say this, because God is showing me this. Look, the hardest people for you to reach is your family. Oh, we, I'm, I'm alone on this. Okay. The hardest people to reach are your family. I don't know why. Why, God? Why are they the difficult ones? Why are they the stubborn ones? Why is it just so, it's easy for me to come up to a stranger and talk to them. It's easy for me to have a friend, but why is it my family, God? Why do I get tested on holidays? Listen, if you get up with your family on Easter, make sure you're prayed up, okay? You're prayed up, okay? Why, God? Why? Why? It's because those are the people that God is calling you to reach. And to reach those people in your family, you need the anointing, the presence of God, because they know everything about you. They know your past. They know the, the, your teenage years. They know the, the, your party life. They know the time that you was cussing somebody out in front of them. You were trying to fight somebody. They, they were holding you back. <laughs> they know everything about you. They know everything about you. Those are the hardest people to reach. And in order to reach them, you're going to have to step outside of your comfort zone and step into the spirit and the anointing of God. Oof. Revelations 3.20. Revelations 3.20. Look what Jesus is trying to do. Look at this. He says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. 
if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, this is so important. If anyone opens, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, meaning people hear God's voice. People hear God's voice. I remember I went to a high school one time. We were preaching in a high school and um, ministering the love of Jesus to, to all these kids. And, and it was packed. It was probably it was 150 kids or something. I don't know. And I don't know who believes in what. And I know that there was atheists. I know that there was people from all types of religions. And I was just, you know, ministering the love of Jesus. And, and I said, okay, if you've never heard the voice of God, well, let me, let, me have, let me ask you this question. Have you ever been in a situation and you said, something told me I should do this? Something told me I should say that. Something told me I need to leave. Something told me I needed to lock my door. Well, who was that something? Because it wasn't you. Because God is constantly speaking to people who claim to be this or claim to be that. He loves his children. He's constantly pursuing his people and pursuing his children. He says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. The door is your heart. And God right now is standing at the door of your heart right now, and he is knocking. He says, those who open the door, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, you see, we have a decision to make because the Holy Spirit is constantly speaking but we, we have a decision on whether we want to open the door or not. And when you're in your comfort zone, the Holy Spirit is always knocking on your heart. I want you to speak to that person over there. I know they look crazy, but there's something that I want them to know from me. Ooh, I don't know. Oof. I don't know about that. Let me just pretend I didn't hear that. I'm busy. I got a lot to do today. He's knocking on your heart. I want you to, to call this person and tell them that you forgive them. I know it's been a long time. I know it was their fault, but I want you to, for, to, show, to show my love to them. And I want you to say, I forgive you, and God loves you. I want you to say that, and we say, oh, uh, uh, all these excuses, and, and, and oh, there's their fault, and we just ignore God. But that's when Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. And you can either allow him to come in or not. And this is the next part of this that is so powerful. What happens when Jesus comes in? What happens when you open the door? He says, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Everyone say dine with him. Jesus is talking about dinner. You know, one of my favorite things to do with my wife, we're going to do it tonight, yes, is um, having dinner. <laughs> I thought about that. I said, I need to say what I'm going to say fast because <laughs> I just... <laughs> I mean, we're married, so, you know, look, I mean, you know, we need, you know, it's, it's, we're married. Um, she said, okay, move on, move on. I love being awkward in church. I love it. Because as soon as we leave here, we're going to put on a show. It's going to be sex, sex, sex. But it's just going to go. Um, anyways. But anyways, one of my favorite things to do, just being honest, one of my favorite things to do with my wife is go out to dinner. Because when we go out to dinner, it is our time to connect. It is our time to be intimate. It is our time to just let down our guards. I don't know about you, but when you go out to dinner with somebody, it's usually a time where you could be real. It's usually a time where, where you're going to start seeing another side of somebody because it's something about dinner where there's this intimate time where, where you're able to put down your guards and kind of show a little bit more of who you are. It's that time. And so dinner represents intimacy. Dinner represents this, this, this getting to know on another level. And what Jesus is saying is, is that this is so revelation. I need you to get this revelation right now. He is saying, when I'm knocking on the door of your heart and I'm, in, and I'm directing you to do something, I'm directing you to talk to somebody, I'm directing you to share my love with somebody. And I, what happens is, is that I come in and basically it's like we're having dinner. There is an intimacy with Jesus that you get when you obey what he's calling you to do. When you step outside of your comfort zone and you face your fear because you know God is telling you to do it, there's another facet of God that he begins to unlock. There's another revelation of who he is. There's another power that he begins to unfold in your life when you just step out and say yes. And the amazing thing about it is, is that God created you. Whew, this is so powerful. 
God created you. Because he created you, he knows your beginning, he knows your middle, he knows your end. He knows things inside of you that you don't know about yourself. So let me tell you what's happening here. As you begin to be obedient whenever God is showing you to do something, what's happening is he comes in for dinner. But when you're having dinner with Jesus, you're not only learning about who he is, but he also begins to show you about who you are. What happens is, is that when you obey God and you do the things that he's calling you to do, you begin to not only learn about who he is, but you learn more about who you are. What if you're struggling with your identity today? Because you never eat dinner with Jesus. What if we're struggling with who we are and what our purpose is and we have these gifts that we don't use? Like we, we're, we know how to write, but we don't write. We, we know how to speak, but we don't speak. We know how to have all the, like we have these things that are just dormant on the inside of us. But what if they're dormant? What if they're, we're not using our full capacity of who we are as people because we never step out of our comfort zone and allow the Lord to come in and show us who we are? And I want to encourage you, it starts today. As God begins to put people on your heart, don't resist. Step out and trust him. As he begins to show you people, to love people, to whatever he puts in your heart, to do something for him, don't resist because you're missing out of knowing more about him and you're missing out of knowing more about you. So many of us, we hear the knock of God. Let me tell you what happens, though. We hear the knock of Jesus. But at the same time, did you know that there's also another knock as well? Your doors are hard. The Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart. But there's something else that is knocking on your heart. And there's this battle that is circling around your comfort zone. And I want to talk real quick about the battle around your comfort zone. Genesis 4-2. I want to go here real quick. I want to talk about this battle. Many of us are in a battle right now. We're facing all these things in our mind and in our heart, and, and instead of moving, we're standing still. And I'm going to show you why. So this is the beginning. This is Adam and Eve's kids. It says in Genesis 4, 2, it says, Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep. Everyone say keeper of the sheep. He loved sheep. But Cain was a tiller on the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock of their fat. I'm going to say this again. There's two different offerings here. Catch this. There's two different people. In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. He brought an offering of the fruit of the ground. That's great. Here's what the second guy does. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock, but he took it to the next level, and their fat. He, he got extra. Let me tell you what happens. There's two different people. There's one that gave God, gave to God, but, but he gave to God out of his comfort. There's another person that gives to God, but he takes the next step. He steps out in discomfort. He steps out past his comfort zone to give to God. You know, there's two different types of giving. And many people right now are only giving out of being comfortable. We only do what's comfortable. We only give what's comfortable. We only talk to someone that is comfortable. If we have the time, if we have this, everything has to be in order. We only do things in our life that fit our needs. We don't really do things sacrificially. We don't really do things that makes us uncomfortable because we are addicted to our comfort zones. And Cain is addicted to his comfort zone. Yes, he's serving God, but he only does it in his comfort. But Abel says, no, God, I, I want to I step out. I want to take this next step. And let me tell you what God says. It says, verse 5, it says, but God, it says, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering. He respected it. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. He respected one offering, but he did not have respect for the other offering. And so I really believe God is saying right now, it's time for us to step out, to start giving our best. Right now, me doing what I'm doing, I am, I am stepping out of my comfort zone. 
I am sowing out of discomfort. I've been speaking for a long time now. But after my father passed away, there were so many things that I was up against. I didn't know if I was going to be the same person anymore. I didn't know if I was going to have the joy of the Lord anymore. I didn't know if I was going to be able to speak anymore and not this soon. I didn't, I didn't have any idea I, I could do it. And I remember, you know, the, the memorial service, I didn't even want to speak. And I remember just going up there, and I didn't know what to expect. But when I got up there, there was a presence that, that I never felt before. There was such a power of God that came upon me. He was giving me confidence in what I was saying. God was with me. He was directing me. I felt no pain. I felt no sadness. I felt no doubt. I felt no lack. All I felt was the glory of God. But what if I never stepped out? I learned so much about God that day, and I also learned a lot about myself. But that would have just been a mystery if I would have said no to God because I wasn't comfortable. You see, many of us don't ever move with God because we only do it if all the ducks are in order. We're control freaks. But the reason why we're control freaks is because we're secretly comfort, comfort zone addicts. And so we never get to see another facet of who God is. It said that, it said that God looked at one and respected it. And he looked at the other one and he had no respect for it. I don't know about you. I don't want to stand before God one day and he looks at my life and he says, I don't respect your life. <laughs> because I'm so afraid to step out when he's calling me to step out. Listen, I love that we come to church. I love that we worship God. I love that we pray. But the Lord is saying in this season, honor me by stepping out of your comfort zone. Step out when God tells you to do something. Amen? So let me tell you, this is what it says. So, so Cain is in the situation. In verse 6, it says, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? If you do this, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, this is the other knock on the door. Woo, this is so powerful. And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. And it desires. It, its desire is for you but you shall rule over it. You have a choice. You can rule over this. Let me tell you what this sin is. This sin that is lying at the, at, at, at the door, that is knocking. You see, Jesus is knocking, but there's something else knocking. The number one enemy over the battle of your comfort zone is fear. It's fear. Fear was knocking on the door of Cain. God was knocking too, but fear was too. You have two knocks going on every single day. The Holy Spirit is knocking, but then there's another knock on the door, and it's fear. And now you're in the middle of this battle. Well, how do you press through? Because fear is, 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 is there's this fear that, you know, if I step out, I could fail. If I step out, I'm going to get embarrassed. If I step out, i got to surrender my pride. And there's all these things going on. But let me tell you when you step out, because this is so powerful. This is what John 20, 21 says. What year is it? What is our scripture that we're standing on? John 20, 21. And this is so prophetic. This is so prophetic for this year. It is 2021, and this is the word of the Lord that he gave us at the very beginning. And this is your word. Look at this. So Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Where is God? Where does God want to send you? He wants to send you to his people. He wants to send you to that person. He wants to send you. It's not, he just don't want to send you so you can just make money. He wants to send you to bring people to know him. And that's what God wants to do this year. He wants to do something in your life. I know you believe you're not worthy, but God has qualified you because of what his son did for you on the cross. And it's not about your sin. It's not about your mess. Matter of fact, he wants to use your mess and make it a message. So every time you go through something, you're just building up your testimony. Because it's not about you falling down. It's about you getting back up. Now, this is so powerful. Because a lot of us are afraid to step out in our comfort zone. But this is what God showed me a while ago. So now, when I feel nervous before I speak, which happens quite often, 
I, you, you, you know, I, I know that something's about to be waiting for me when I go up there. And I want you to know this. If you can get this revelation, man, you're going to be doing things this year that you've never thought you would do in a million years. Because this is what's happened. There, there, is called, there is something called a divine appointment. God has an appointment with you. There is an appointment with his power if you can do what he's calling you to do. I know it doesn't make sense. I know you may not have the money. I know you may not have the connections. I know you probably think you're not smart enough or whatever, but there's something that is waiting for you if you say yes and you step out. And look at this. John 20, 21 says, peace be with you. Everyone say peace. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. The, the, the start of this, Jesus is, is guaranteeing. He, he is making his promise. He's saying when you step out to be sent, what's going to be with you? No, I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all don't get it. i got to have you say it. Jesus is prophesying right now. He says, I know you're afraid to step out and talk to this person. I know you deal with the fear of rejection and the fear of failure and, and the fear of shame and the fear of being embarrassed. But this is what he is guaranteeing. When you are obedient to God and what he's calling you to do, something, you're, something is going to meet you when you step out. And that is peace be with you. And Jesus is saying that I've already provided my peace. I've already provided my love. I've already brought provision. If you can step out and do the thing that I'm calling you to do. Yes, even when I point out a person that I want you to talk to, you may not even know what to say. You may not even know how to pray. But God is saying, don't worry about that because I provided my words for you. Peace be with you. I know a lot of us are just waiting and we need to see things line up. But God is saying, I need you to trust me and, and, and step out of your comfort zone. Because when you step out, you're going to be stepping into my power. You know, it's so funny because when I look at this, Jesus would never ask me and you to do something that he's never done. <laughs> this is what it says. It says, John 1.1. 1, 1. Let me tell you what Jesus did, just to kind of paint this picture. It says, in the beginning was the word. This is before the earth was created, okay? This is the beginning. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was I'm sorry, and the, word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning, Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, are one. Before earth was ever created, Jesus is in heaven. Jesus is on the throne. Jesus has the name above all names. Jesus, the Son of God, the, 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 the person of God, Jesus, the Savior, Yeshua, Jesus. Sin came into the world, and something needed to be done. <laughs> And God looked at Jesus, and in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but Jesus still had a choice. He didn't have to say yes. And God says, something has to be done. And Jesus said, I'll go. Jesus steps out of his comfort zone. And I really thought about this. We, 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 we read the stories. We think of, like, it's so normal to us. But what he did was, what, what this is is so incredible. He leaves heaven as God. And he comes, like, not even as an adult. Like, if I would have left heaven, I would have at least came as a grown person. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm going to leave heaven, let me come as me and let me just get, get this going. No. He comes as a baby. Now, I would have had, uh, God, you want to send me on earth? Cool. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm just going to just be there and I'm going to, okay, who do I need to talk to when I get there? Who do I need to connect with? Huh? I'm being born? I'm, wait, wait, you wait. <laughs> wait, you want me to be born? Like, born? Like born again? Physically? Jesus had to be a baby. You talk about the most humble thing in the world. Okay, you, in your mind, you have to be a baby again. Oh my goodness, I have to learn how to walk again? All these things that babies go through, I have to go through. Jesus becomes a teenager. Oh. He has to go through teenage years with hormones, and he has to face all the fears that teenagers go through. He had to be uncomfortable as a teenager. Then, as he gets older, he experiences rejection, people trying to kill him, he gets, he gets hurt, he feels the pain, and then after all of that, he gets crucified. He gets crucified to represent all the sin of the world. Jesus didn't do nothing wrong, but we did, and he's taking the shots for us. 
He has to go through this life on earth for 33 years to experience all the pains that we experience in life, to experience the lack, to experience the, the um, being uncomfortable, to experience the anxiety. He's sweating blood like he's going through hell completely out of his comfort zone because he said, if I can, can get out of my comfort zone, I can give them power to get out of theirs. I'm going to say that again. He said, if I can leave my comfort zone, because I love my people so much, I can send the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of them so they can get out of theirs. And so Jesus is like, I had to go through all what I went through because I loved you. Why are you stopping now? He multiplied himself into all of us as the body of Christ. His spirit lives on the inside of you. You are valuable and you are important and God wants to use you. But, he, but his mission is falling on the earth. There's so much darkness because so many people are comfort zone addicts. And it's easy for all these churches. We have a million churches on this one street. We, we have all these churches, and I'm not putting people down, but God is convicting myself as well. And he's saying something has to be done because people are more comfortable meeting in a building because it's their comfort zone than getting out there and ministering the love of Jesus to people. Come on. And my job and our job, Pastor Marlon and myself, as your pastors, is to equip you so you can go out. It's not equip you so you, so you could just take up, you know, being here and just... We did, you know, which is great. I want to fellowship with you guys. I love you guys. You know, we want, we want this church to be powerful, strong. We do see this church having thousands of people one day. We really, really do. But not for the purposes of just having a lot of people, for the purposes of having disciples that are going out here and seeing change. You know, my freshman year in high school, I was a great basketball player, but I sat on the bench. One of my teammates is right there, Derek. He testified. He was getting all my playing time. He was getting all my playing time. He was dunking on people. I was so mad. I can't even, I can't even touch the backboard. Showing off. But so many believers are sitting on the bench. Talking about put me in. Only if it's comfortable. And God is saying, I'm calling you in the game. With two seconds on the shot clock, with two seconds on the clock, and, and we're down by one, and I'm putting the ball in your hands, but you don't have to fear anything because I'm with you, and I guarantee the win. Did you just hear what I said? If you know basketball, you're down by one point, two seconds left, coach draws the timeout. Calls the, calls the timeout, draws up the play. The play is for you. There is a play on earth right now with two seconds left on the shot clock. The world is getting worse and worse. People are dying. People are afraid. Hospitals are filled. People are in mental institutions. We, we have people who are struggling with mental health because they don't understand the health of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you that the ball, God wants to put the ball in your hands. He doesn't want to throw you the, he doesn't want the, you know, for you to get the ball and you pass it to someone else because that's what we're used to doing. Oh, let me pass it to the pastor. I should pray for that person. But pastor, can you pray for them? You have the ball. Shoot. Shoot the ball. Step out and do the thing that God is calling you to do. I know we think we need to know more. I don't know enough scriptures. I, I, well, I just started going back to church. I, shoot the ball. Shoot the ball. God is saying, I've qualified you. There's no excuses. That, cause, cause, because we've run out of excuses because we have him with us. This is what he says in John 6, 38. So I want to get into the mind of Jesus because I'm like, well, how did you do it, God? I, like, I know you're a God, but you were still 100% man as well. You still experienced all the things that we went through. And this is what he says. He says, Jesus says, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Here's what I want us to adopt today, that we can wake up tomorrow and say, God, I'm surrendering my week. I'm surrendering my day. Not my will, but your will, God. If you can have this, I'm telling you, this is where you're going to take it to the next level. Philippians 2, and then, I'm about, and then I have something else and we're going to wrap. Philippians 2, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mind. Everyone say mind. 
I know a lot of us are dealing with our old minds that we grew up with, but God wants to give you a new mind every single day. He wants to renew your mind with his word. I don't care if you think the Bible is boring. You need to say, God, if, you, if this is really you, I need you to open up this Bible and speak to me. I need you to make this be real to me. You have to get desperate in your pursuit with God. He will speak to you through his word like never before. I know you thought it was some old dusty Bible stories, but God will begin to pull things out of this Bible and speak to you for your life. And you're like, oh, my goodness. And what happens is, is that when you read the word, you begin to get sensitive and know his voice so that when God does speak, you are so in tune to what he's saying and you know it's God leading you. If your mom or your father called you right now, they can call you from an unknown number. If you, or, or a best friend, they can call you from an unknown number. But because you talk to them all the time, as soon as they say, hey, what's up? You don't have to go, who's this? Matter of fact, that's offensive. But we say, who's this? To God all the time. Is this God? Because we are not sensitive to his voice because we don't have dinner with him. And God is saying, the reason why you don't know when I speak to you is because you never step out. Even if you step out and it's not God, God will still have grace to pick you up. Because many times, I mean, I went up to this one guy, I talked about this the other day, and I was like, I'm going to step out, I'm going to step out, prophetically, I'm going to step out. And there was his kid, and I came up to him, and we were at another school, and um, I came up to him, and I said, hey, man, I said, God is showing me that, that he wants to uh, restore your relationship with your father. He said, my relationship with my father is great. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, praise God, praise God. Right. I didn't even know what to say. I fell flat on my face, and I humiliated myself. But you know what? It taught me to know what was God's voice or, and what was my voice. It trained me. You see, the Holy Spirit wants to train you. He wants to train your ears. When you talk to your friends or when you talk to people, you're, tra- you're being trained to learn their voice. So that if you're in a situation and someone calls you, you know it's them without you questioning it. And God wants to put you in a place where you know his voice and you don't have to question it. But you're going to have to step out of your comfort zone. A lot of us have so much, we don't understand, it is pride. It's the pride of you not wanting to get embarrassed. But you better lay that down because this is what Jesus did. This is what Jesus said. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He came down here and he made himself of no reputation. Everyone say no reputation. The first thing that we have to do in order to step outside of our comfort zone is empty our reputation. Because your reputation is getting in the way of what God is calling you to do. I know you're cool. I know you're comfortable. I know you don't want to seem crazy. I get it. I don't want to seem crazy either, okay? But our reputation of who people know us to be is stopping the new version of who God is calling you to be. Man, this, I'm going to say it again. I don't even know if I remember what I said, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. That was the, the Holy Spirit. I, I didn't write that down. So uh, <laughs> our, our, yeah, it's on video. Thank, thank you, girl. Our old version of ourselves is all we know. All right, I'm not going to try it. Okay, I, tried. <laughs> I tried to go for it. <laughs> I can't do it. But that's, see, see, that's humility. You see that? Because I'm not afraid to be vulnerable. I'm not afraid to step outside of my comfort zone. That's why the Holy Spirit wants to use me. Because I'm not afraid to be used by God. I'm not afraid to fail. And some of, so many of us are, have our guards up and we're so, we want to be perfect and we're perfectionists, but we're missing what God wants to do in our life. And God is saying, can you be vulnerable? Can you invite me into dinner? Can you let your guards down? Because I will train you. I will train you to be my powerhouse. And then people in your life, they're not going to doubt that God is real anymore. They're going to know that they know that they know God is real because of how, what God is doing in your life through you. All people know is religion. But all they need is an encounter with someone who's in a relationship with Jesus. So you have to empty your reputation. Number two, it says, it says he emptied his reputation, taking the form of a bond servant. So you have to be a servant. You have to allow God to use your vessel. I'm going to go through this fast. And then it says that, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. You need humility. So the first thing, empty your reputation. You have to say, God, I'm your servant. Use me as your vessel. Where I work at, where I go, go to work, where, where, where I work out at. You know, I want you, for all my gym people, anybody love going to the gym? Woo! 
Listen, God will begin to even highlight you and, and, and people, pe- God will be, begin to even highlight people for you in the gym. People, God will highlight people for you wherever you go because God is constantly looking to speak to someone and love someone and encourage someone. He wants to use you. And the fourth thing is obedience to dying to yourself. It says that he became, he became, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death. Amen. Look at that on video. I'm running out of time and I got to close here. Are you guys still with me? I want to close with this because this is the finale of the message. Buckle your seatbelts. This is it. I need you to be with me right now. This is Exodus 4 verse 10. I want to close with this because we have to leave knowing what we got. Moses, Moses, Moses. It says, Exodus 4.10, it says, Then Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech. Moses is in a time in his life where he is hidden. He is walking around with his blanket. He has the Linus blanket, and he's a grown man. He has issues with his speech. He is not a good public speaker. He has all these different things. And God is coming to Moses in the middle of his comfort zone. And God is shaking Moses out of his comfort zone because now God is calling Moses to be a public speaker. This sounds hilarious to people that Moses, the kid that stood up in front of the class that was stuttering, that kid is the one that God wants to use to impact people through his speaking. I want you to look at things in your life right now. The things that you've been ashamed of, the things that you say, well, I'm not good at that. The things that you've, you've hid behind, God is saying, I want to use that. Because when I use that, you're going to know it's not you, it's me. What if the insecurities that you have in your life is there on purpose? What if some of the flaws that you go through in your personality or, you know, the way you talk or the way you think. What if that's on purpose? What if God wants to use your insecurities so that you're not secure in yourself, but you get secure in God? What if God wants to use your insecurities so that when you stand up and you do it, you can't get prideful because you're like, it's not me. You know, I know you think God just wants to use the people who are the most talented. No, no, no. He takes the lowly of people. He takes people who are unqualified. He takes the people that, that when people see, they're like, oh, my God, that's only God. <laughs> he wants to use those people. He wants to use you in areas that you said, I'm not good at. I'm horrible at this. I've had bad experiences since I was a kid. I will never do it. And don't be surprised if you hear Jesus knocking on the door. But when he knocks on the door, you better open it up because he has an adventure for you. He has something for you that's going to transform your life, and you're no longer going to be bored with religion, but you're going to be so on fire for God because of what he's doing in your life and what he's doing through you. And he wants to show you his power. He wants you to show you his glory, because once you experience his glory, nothing else matches to it. You don't got to worry about being free of this addiction first. Just just open the door to God, and he'll take care of everything else. (laughs) You're not even going to think about stuff, (laughs) because the glory is on your life. So this is what it says. It says, it says, It says, so the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth, Moses? Like, who makes the mute, the deaf, the sing, the blind? Have I not the Lord? Now, therefore, go, go, I send you, go, and I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with your mouth. I'm going to be with your weaknesses, and I'm going to teach you what you shall say. God is saying the flaws that, that we believe that disqualify us, when God's anointing comes upon us, it qualifies us. I'm going to say it again. The flaws that we have, we believe it disqualifies us. But when you match that with the anointing of God and he comes upon your weaknesses, he actually qualifies it. He qualifies the weaknesses that you carry. You are unqualified without the anointing and the presence of God. I know you only want to do things that you're strong in, but that's not faith. That's your comfort zone. God wants to use you in the areas where you're uncomfortable in. I know you're not a people person, but God is calling you to be a people person. In him. I know you, you have a hard time connecting with people sometimes or people that look like this or from this ethnicity or whatever, but God will purposely put you around the people that you're uncomfortable to be with. And he'll say, open the door, let me in. And he'll begin to show you that this entire time, the people that you, were, the people that you thought that you weren't supposed to be connected with are the very people he's called you to be connected with. So this is what it says. I'm going to end right here. Here's mine. Have a side, buddy. 
So he says, oh, my Lord, please send by the hand of whoever else. I want to go here. God meets Moses where he is. It says, verse 14, it says, so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. But what matches after this doesn't sound like anger to me. I don't believe God was angry. Because God is never surprised. God knew what was going to happen. When he called Moses, he's not surprised. He's God. He knows the, the end from the beginning. But I truly, truly believe what follows next confirms that it wasn't anger. Because it says after this, it says, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? Because if you're afraid to speak, don't, don't worry about it. I, I got somebody else that can help you. He says, I know that he can speak well. And look, he's coming out right now to meet you. When he sees you, he's going to be glad in his heart. Now, don't worry, Moses, because this is what I'm going to do. Don't worry. I, I got a plan. This is so cool. He's saying, you're afraid to speak. Okay, I'm going to bring someone else that's going to help you on your journey. To the thing that I'm calling you to do. You're not going to be alone. God is meeting Moses at the end of his faith. He's meeting Moses where he feels like he can't do it. And I want to speak grace and love over you right now. Some of us who are like, oh my God, God is going to be mad at me because I'm so afraid to do this. No, 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 no. God's grace is with you. He's with you to help, to help you step out by little, little baby steps. He's with you. His patience is endless. His love is unimaginable. And so he takes his time with Moses and he says, don't be afraid, Moses. I got somebody with you. I want you to stand to your feet because I want to end with this. So this is what God tells Moses. I'll have you stand up because I don't want you to miss this. This is how we're going to end this. This is what God tells Moses. He says, Moses. You are going to take this rod in your hand. And with this rod, you're going to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, this is so powerful because Moses' entire life, he hasn't been carrying a rod. He's been carrying a blanket. I'm going to let it just, I want the word to sit. Moses has not let go of his blanket one time in his life. He only does things that are comfortable. He doesn't do things that are uncomfortable. He only moves in his comfort zone. He's been hiding behind a desert, leading sheep for, for 40 years. He's buried his giftings and he's not a good public speaker and he has all these negative thoughts against himself. He doesn't want to be in the spotlight. He would rather be behind the scenes and let nobody see him because of his insecurities and fears and he has his blankie and he's holding on to it. And God says, put down the blanket and pick up my rod. When Moses picks up the rod, Moses splits the Red Sea open. When Moses picks up the rod, Moses sees water come out of a rock. When Moses picks up the rod, all of a sudden he's speaking eloquently. All of a sudden he can speak well. All of a sudden he's anointed. All of a sudden God is using him with his messages to impact millions of people. And God is saying in this hour, I need you to put your blanket down. And I need you to pick up my rod. My rod is my presence. My rod is the word. My rod is, is my love. My rod is your anointing. And with my rod, I'm going to surprise you, says the Lord. You're going to split things wide open that have been in the way. There's going to be barriers that are going to be split wide open that have been coming against you. With his rod, you're going to see water come out of rocks. You're going you're gonna to encounter love from people that have, that have had their hearts be so hardened with unforgiveness. People that have been abandoned. People that have been neglected. People that have been injured by the world. You're going to, with your rod, you're going to speak to their hearts. And you're going to see water burst through that rock. You're going to see the love of God overflow upon them. And you're going to see that rock break off of their heart. And they're going to have a soft heart. And they're going to receive Jesus with the rod. Moses has the rod. Let me tell you this. Moses doesn't have to change up his life. He, he's not 
God doesn't say, well, before Moses, before I give you this rod, you need to change this. You need to do this. You need to cut this person out. You got to go. Because that's what we think God is because that's all we know is religion. Because our mama probably told us that or our grandma told us this. All we know God is through religion. So all we know is what we can do and what we can't do. And God is like, I'm not thinking about that, Moses. Just pick up my rod and everything else comes together. So right now, come on, I want you to pray with me. Let's put down our blankets by faith. Come on. The fears of rejection, the fears of failure, the fears of not being able to fit in, the fears of being disconnected, the fears of looking stupid, the fears of having nothing to say, the fears of getting embarrassed, the fears of stepping out and we just look ridiculous. Father, we drop the fear now. We pick up our calling. We pick up our mantle. We pick up the anointing. We pick up the glory. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I want you to repent to God right now and repent to him right now of the things that you have been carrying, the blankets that you've been carrying. Come on. I want you to say, God, I surrender this. And I want you to pick up the rod by faith. You need to pick up the word tomorrow. You need to say, God, every single day, I need a Bible. Can I see your Bible, please? Thank you, brother. Every single day, I need you, when you get up in the morning, I don't care how, how, what time it is, but when you get up, you'd have to say, God, I know I'm insecure. I know I'm weak. I know I go off. I know I'm lustful. I, I know I'm confused. I know I'm in my temper. I know I don't like people this early in the morning. I know how I can be, but God, I choose to pick up your rod this morning. God, speak to me. Use me. Use my word. Cut open rivers. Break open rocks in the name of Jesus. I don't care if it's for five minutes. You get to Jesus and you pick up your rod. Stop leaving your house without your rod. Pick up your rod. Thank you, Father, for your presence, Jesus. Father, I just pray right now in Jesus' name for people who are watching and people who are here today for an encounter with you, Jesus. If you've never opened your heart to say, Jesus, I receive you. I, I believe what you did for me, and I open my heart to you. If you want to just pray that, I'll pray that with you. And because God has called you to be his vessel here on earth, and he wants to use you, and he wants to use you mightily and bless you and bless your family, but he also wants you to spend eternity with him. That when you die, there's no fear of death. Because absent from the body means you're present with Jesus. So, Father, let's just pray this prayer. Jesus, <laughs> I believe that you came down out of your comfort zone to die on the cross for me. I receive forgiveness for all my sins, past, present, and future. I pick up my rod today and the power of the Holy Spirit overflow through me with your love and your majesty in Jesus mighty name amen pick up your rod ask God to show you who he's calling you to impact ask God to show you today tomorrow during the week God who am I supposed to speak to when you go to the gas station I know people got masks on but still Holy Spirit can just do something everywhere you go it's not by accidents he hooks you up to be connected to people wherever you are. He has, he wants to reach them. He wants to use you. Let's get out of our comfort zones and let's get into Jesus. Amen? Amen. <laughs>